Have you ever had the squelch on your radio stay open constantly unless you move your hand close to it? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, on that flight, I had a bad time. We're going to talk about poor USB chargers and the electromagnetic noise that they emit. If you fly with a tablet, you probably keep it charged with a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug USB charger. So, how do you know that your charger is not spitting out all kind of EMI into your avionics? Can you just trust the manufacturer? We're going to check all of the 12 volt USB chargers that I own uh, with a pocket spectrum analyzer. Uh, we're going to use them to charge an actual iPad. And we're going to power them with a decent, clean laboratory power supply. Here's the electromagnetic noise floor in my basement, which is uh, between negative 80 and negative 90 dB across most of the spectrum. And we start with this uh, unbranded charger that's just marked uh, C6 that I've had for years. It's got a volt and an amp meter. And it looks like a couple of chargers are still sold in some remote corners of the internet. So we apply power, and what do we get? We get a peak around uh, 27 megahertz, around negative 65 decibels, and a raised noise floor around 250, 300 megahertz. Overall, not terrible. I've actually used this charger for, uh, for a bunch of years in a plane, and um, yeah, would have bothered me too much having to do that again. Next is a Scosh. It looks like one that they're still selling on their website, but it's actually uh, an older model. We apply power and it's bad. It's really, really, really bad. It's got two big peaks at 250 and uh, 300 megahertz, and they come up all the way up to the negative 60 dB level. This is a very, very noisy charger. It is particularly bad for aviation. You know why? You remember what's in the 300 megahertz range? Quiz time. That's right. It's the ILS glide slope. Yeah, I don't know if Scosh improved on their designs. I don't want to slander them, but this particular model that is in my hands is very, very bad. I would not want this in an airplane. Next is an insignia. Model is uh, NSMCC 24W2K. Insignia is Best Buy's own brand. And in fact, I, I did buy this at Best Buy last week for uh, 70 bucks. Note that it's got an FCC marking, which certainly inspires hope. So I'm going to power it up, and what do we see? Almost no change to the noise floor. It causes almost no noticeable change in the spectrum on top of the noise floor. I actually had to double check that it was indeed charging the iPad because its emissions were so small. And yes, it is. Look at the iPad. This is uh, the best I've seen. And this is the charger that I'm using in the plane these days. Finally, we're going to look at this Duracell Pro 169. Used to be sold at Walmart for uh, seven dollars. I've had it for for a few years. We're gonna power it up and whoa, 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 whoa! This this is a disaster. It's got peaks everywhere, including one at 100 megahertz that looks perfectly positioned to disrupt localizer reception. And it's got all kind of noise between 100 and 200 megahertz, which is where the air band is located. Uh, this makes me want to cry. This one is the charger that I had in the plane when the squelch couldn't close. We also had the radio inspected by the avionic shop. And they said that the squelch was too loose and that they had to recalibrate it. So this USB charger alone was not the only factor in the problem, but it was certainly one big cause of issues. Shame on you, Duracell, for selling this absolute big piece of garbage. 
Um, and that concludes our tests. Uh, thank you for watching the video. I hope the video was informative and safe flying.